Welcome back to the Self Seed Podcast. Today, here with me, I have Faye. That's that's your name, bro, right? Am right. I pronouncing it right? Or there's yeah, some yeah, Chinese poems no, to it? No, no, that's, that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm here with Faye, and today we are going to talk about uh, design. Mostly we are going to see how we, we are going to redefine design. So we are going to see from products to processes to and, and just everything in between. And Faye is the professional here, so he's going to nar- give us a narration or uh, walk us through. And my name is Emmanuel. This is the Self Seed Podcast. And uh, I hope if you're new to the podcast, remember that the Self Seed Podcast is available on your podcasting platform. And today is episode 15. Episode 15. And if you missed the previous ones, just click on the link on the links attached to this uh, episode and you'll be redirected to to the previous episodes or you can just go to www.celsi.transistor.fm i hope you enjoy welcome fay welcome man to the podcast yeah thank you for having me it's yeah. a pleasure it's a pleasure to have you it's an honor you know Perfect. always virtually just talking and stuff and yeah, yeah. I've always Still been like looking, looking at your work, like your brand and everything. I think you're doing good. Uh, we, we, we are trying. We are trying the same you're way doing you are. you're doing a good job. I think you're doing great, actually. Thank you. Thank you, man. Yeah. So uh, one thing that uh, maybe we can start with is you giving us a glimpse of your journey how it has been how it is until to until this point and what you're looking forward to and you know the whole thing that you do just give us uh your journey who is Faye? what do you do how do you do it and so on yeah okay good um my name is Faye, and um, i'm from nigeria and I moved to China in 2012 to study, to do my bachelor's. I, I was in Nanjing for a year and then I moved to Beijing. So I did my, I did my bachelor in architecture in Beijing. I did my master's in Beijing and then I started working for a while. So that's, that's where like the old design thing started because I, I went to like school, like design school that's where like everything like the designing knowledge and the design everything about design that's where i actually learned it and then what happened was Mm. during during covid yeah um you know the way it was in china like uh so so many restrictions so many lockdowns and everything so there were a lot of times where i you you'd wake up one day and you'd be like oh you cannot go out and you cannot go to work and stuff (laughs) you have to work from home so you know there there was a lot of like this this time where you didn't have a lot of things to do yeah so i'm just i just trying to talk about how the the clothing brand started Hmm. and that's when i had like so many things so many time to do different stuff and then i at that point i had knowledge with illustrator yeah because in architecture also we use that for analysis drawings and some some drawings we use illustrator so i had this i had this um knowledge of illustrator and then i started like designing t-shirts it was looking good and Mm -hmm. then you know being in china you have like connections to manufacturers and everything yeah that's true that's true yeah i did couple couple samples and it was it was looking good so i was like okay I would try try to maybe sell it and then i just opened an instagram page for it I came mm. up with a name and yeah that's that's how there's there's a lot of things to it maybe we'll get into details about it but this is just like the preview of how everything happened with the brand how i started how i went to china and everything that's that's cool that's cool yeah. uh i think your story is cool it's cool because i mean covid covid did uh did a lot of uh, wonders a lot of magic to us eh? right. it had both positive both negative impacts but 
I think when we wait and see the positives, uh, it was a good time as well. It was a good time where you had to like reconnect with yourself, yeah, reinvent mean. things or maybe invent things. And that's cool. Right. That's cool. I think there are a lot of people who started uh, businesses let's say online related businesses during yeah, COVID. During COVID, right? yeah, yeah, people yeah. created softwares just to solve the problem of <laughs> staying yeah. at home right. yeah, yeah. Uh, i like uh so uh if uh, for anyone listening uh this guy here or oh, with us today he he runs a uh, 15 15 right. a brand right. and you can go check them on out on instagram or the uh the website is 15.com no 15 studios Oh, 15 studios.com. Yeah, you can go check out, check out their products uh, and so on. So you said something about going to design school, doing architecture. And as engineers, we know that uh, you architects sometimes can create things, pieces or uh, that are complicated. And as an engineer, you have to just bring it to life. Oh, yeah. An architect can just decide to design a C or an S or uh, a right. shape which is <laughs> maybe yeah. has has never existed before, and you have to bring it uh, to to uh, to life. But yeah. same as engineering, I think there are some principles that you guys in design school follow. Yeah. Like there are some principles that you have to maybe look into that you even took these principles fr- away from architecture school, you brought them into 15, into your daily life and so on. And I would just like to know what are some of the principles of design and even the design, the whole design thinking process. How is it like? Uh, yeah, so with architecture and any kind of design, I think there are so many skills where you can transfer, like transferable skills. Because in architecture school, they actually teach you a lot about different types of design. Because you design a lot of buildings, different kind of buildings in school. Um, there is no like specialization where you like, okay, I only design schools or I only design uh, hotels or, you know, something like that. So in in the school, you get like exposed to so many things. You get exposed yeah. to how to design a hospital. There you have to think about, okay, how is the patient going to come in? Where is mm. the emergency? You know, you think about everything. And then when you design a school, you also think about, okay, where are the kids going to come in? Where are the parents going to stay? Or when you mm. design a house, where is the where is the room going to face for like sunlight and all that stuff? So you actually think about all of the things, like the functions. Then you think about like, oh, how do you want it to look? Cause Obviously, you always want everything you design to look good. So that's the same principle like you apply to, I applied to designing when I started designing clothes. So I first think about like, what do I want it to look like? Why do I want to make this? Like the first, the first, one of the first designs I did was um, uh, the hoodie where you can have as a backpack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember oh, I that. Think, yeah, I remember. So it was like, okay, I made a sample of mm. a normal hoodie without the backpack feature and stuff. And then I remember that day, I, I received the, the sample of this hoodie. And then mm. I went out. I went out to a bar and I didn't have any place to put my hoodie. And then I went on, like, okay, so what can I do to like make it look better like okay how can i carry it better and then i went online i went to search and then you find out that someone has already done something cool with the backpack hoodie and it's mm-hmm. not something you have to reinvent i'm like okay this is cool i want to make something like that so yeah. that's how i added that feature to my to the hoodie i already designed so it's, it's like a lot of research as well it's mm-hmm. the same with architecture before you start a design you do research like of work people have done before, like architects, you know, the architects and all that stuff. So when you, when I design like t-shirts, for example, also I do research like, okay, I want to make it look like this. Probably someone has already done something the same, like what I'm mm. thinking about. So I look right. at something that looks the same and then I'm like, okay, yeah. how can I make it mine? So I had my own touch, I had my own brand into it. I'm like, okay. This I don't really like it. I start I start like criticizing people's ideas, and that's how I like 
come up with my own ideas. So that's this is basically my my design process. With architecture and everything, that's that's just the way I, I do things. That's very good. That's very good how you you you, you start with the with the research, trying right. knowing that not everything that you create has to be new completely right, exactly, new exactly, exactly. never existed because i mean right. a, pe- there are a lot of people great people who have already done a lot of work yeah. groundwork so you just yeah. take it from there and then you look at the functionality the aesthetics and you yeah, yeah. give it into your own way it's yeah. like a story five people can tell the same story but one person among the five the story would uh, engage with the audience more yeah, because exactly. of how they told the story right 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 yeah i like true. that i like that yeah, and, yeah i mean that's that's uh sorry for calling <laughs> but yeah that's, no, that's a, yeah that's that's a good good thing because when you think about it when you see it someone has done something before yeah then you know you can do it and you can make it better that's how you like yeah. push push innovation and, you know it's like before probably they would feel like okay the nobody can fly yeah and then someone came made the, the first flight and then the first flight yeah it started improving 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 so that's how everything i think i feel like that any innovation that's how it starts yeah, that's what keeps our society moving right i mean you see somewhere there, I, where was it I, i i saw that thing that sometimes there's a trick that you just have to use is just like steel In yeah, simple yeah, yeah, words, it's like steal yeah, the idea, yeah. just put it in your own words. Yeah, <laughs> there was yeah, a me- there was a meme how it says um the, well the meme was the pic the fl- the picture of the flag of was it Senegal and Cameroon or oh, yeah. some of those West African countries. The flag yeah, was like yeah, you know right. their flags are usually almost yeah, yeah. similar. Yeah, 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 and then yeah. the, the meme on top said uh, when you told your friend not to copy. as as you did and they <laughs> and they just, they just shifted bit, the assignments right? <laughs> yeah so yeah, th- yeah yeah that's good so the, the the other thing that comes into my mind is how do we then apply the principles of design to to daily life to our everyday life because uh i think well the podcast is m- mostly to help people become better versions of, the, of themselves in any right. area that they are doing professionally uh personally and just become greater than how you were yesterday right so how then do we ap- uh, apply this uh thinking design thinking into our daily life like let's say you say uh there are things that you have to look at before you you do any project you have to study the functionality how is it going to be used so as for, at the same time you have to consider aesthetics and so on right and then for engineers they have to de- 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 to look at uh, the lifespan of the building serviceability and you know that process so then in daily in our daily life how can we apply these principles take them away from class and mm-hmm. use them as the way you you have used them to bring about your brand applying mm-hmm. them to your brand uh, creation process right how about other uh, areas of life how can someone maybe emulate these things um i can talk from my own perspective yeah that's that's cool that's that's the, the important part yeah so because i might be right i might be wrong in my own the way i do my things but yeah yeah i for me i think being being a designer like changed a lot for me in my life like in my daily life and stuff i feel like i see things differently than mm. maybe an average person so like when i go out i i do notice things like maybe i see just someone wearing a random t-shirt on the street someone wearing a just a, a, a maybe a car that looks funny or something no i i i really we're on the same track there yeah yeah i really i really didn't notice notice some of the things and i think for me it makes it makes it makes my day more interesting somehow because now mm. I'm focused on I'm seeing things I'm like looking at I'm on a train I'm looking at people and like the way just just you know like just the way the way things the things are you know there, things there was are, this, yeah yeah there was this 
day I, I was on the train and I saw this mm. so the train is as a very blank color everywhere was like gray mm. and then suddenly there's this handlebar like neon green color which just looked very cool it, it looked very simple but I was like oh this is this is something like you know it's just purple <laughs> color you know th- those kind of things and yeah. yeah these are the kind of things I noticed in my day-to-day life and how I apply like my uh what i learned in design school to my daily life daily life mm-hmm. is maybe mm-hmm. if i want to do something you know the research aspects the attention to detail and all that stuff stuff i think mm-hmm. is important for your day to day life uh i don't know how to put it directly but i think i think you you might get what i mean you know <laughs> yeah i understand i understand on that right is it there's a way that when you look when you're already immersed into the creation process Right. There's a way that you you see life differently. Yeah, right. Like right. like everything that happens around you, you you seem to look at it as an opportunity to maybe do something. This yeah. You know, you're looking at as you said, you're looking at someone what's what are they wearing? And now you're trying to figure out in your mind if they could have done that. Oh, there's that. Oh, yeah. oh, oh that's yeah. cool. That's cool. Yeah, right. And then you get ideas for yourself also. Like, okay, I'm doing this wrong. I'm doing this right. This this seems yeah. cool. I'm gonna try that. Yeah. You know, those kind of stuff. Like, you just, you just, so uh, the the little thing that I'm getting here is that we we design yeah. uh, applying the principles of design to our daily life is like it. W- we have to pay more attention to details. Right, it helps right, us right. pay attention to details right, right, right. without things passing us how do they right. say that word they, they they like to say that well you don't live life you just exist but right. then knowing some things in detail helps you like get a, a, a grasp of why is that happening right. like they, they, i think there are sometimes that you wonder or you talk to yourself and you feel like maybe people think i'm you know weird paying attention to things that even some a commoner will never pay attention to yeah, but yeah, you're like yeah. that's cool you tell them that's cool sometimes i walk with my friends and I, i i do tell them maybe i mentioned something that i observed and to them it's just like well it's a normal thing it's but to me it's like yeah, extraordinary yeah. seeing yeah. it there tracks right. my attention and you just want yeah. to focus on that right and that's that's the cool thing about these design principles and once you you pay attention to detail it means you'll start following the procedures of uh handling even life situations how you go about your situations right. looking at them from different angles seeing yeah. how you could have or not you could have but rather how you can do better how you can face circumstances better right 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 i think also one thing i do like in my in my day to day life is I take a lot of pictures just of random things if you check my camera you my camera roll you just see pictures of so many random things it's like okay this looks cool i take a picture of it and i just forget about it it's just on my phone you know and yeah, then something yeah. i'm just scrolling by i'm like oh when did i take this picture this actually looks cool it's speaking to me right now you know sometimes i just don't even think about it and months later it's just like okay this this looks cool just mm. like the 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 time i started the brand The mm. first design I made was mm. a picture. I I don't know if you've seen that design. It was a picture of the of palms. Yeah, yeah, like on 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 a, on a beach or something. Yeah, yeah. So I took this picture and it was I think it was in before COVID. I went home. I went on a holiday from China. I went home. Uh. I just took this picture on a random beach. I I never had a plan to create a brand at that time. Uh. No plan. That picture was just on my phone. And then when I had the idea, like, oh, I want to create a brand, I was just like scrolling through pictures on my phone. I'm like, oh, I must have something on my phone. I've taken a lot of pictures. And then I just saw this video, I'm like, oh, okay. And then I started like manipulating it on Photoshop, adding some colors, color grading, all that stuff. And I'm like, okay, this is cool. Mm. Yeah, Until you got like, it. Yeah. Yeah, because that, that, I think that that photo was cool on the, on the T-shirt, even looking at it from a far distance, because it's just like an everyday common life at, at for people who live in coastal areas right, and right. it was just a, not not a prefabricated not a recreated mom no it's just 
like yeah. there's this yeah. guy walking palm trees yeah. and yeah. stuff yeah yeah that, yeah right, right. that's nice um, that's nice yeah. just a phone it was just a picture i took on my phone randomly <laughs> <laughs> that's nice how, how we can literally see things from a different angle and but then i think one thing comes to to play especially when you com- when you look at covid uh, how covid reshaped the way we work the way mm. we do things right uh sometimes we get overwhelmed let's say when you you were working in, in in china you know that you know nine to six we uh, nine to six uh nine nine six or something yeah, you nine, know nine to nine. People, are, <laughs> yeah. people are always working yeah and maybe sometimes we we get overwhelmed but then right. how do you stay focused how do you stay balanced or uh, keep your creativity alive knowing that you have to do your own uh, your requirement as, as your career in architecture yeah. you have to do projects at the same time you have to manage your brand your personal life your in inter relationships intra relationships how do you manage all of that while uh, staying balanced focused and even innovative yeah honestly when i was working in china i had a lot of problems with that because i think anyone working as an architect in china would know this like the the the, the work is always crazy the overtime hours <laughs> it's like you basically have no life you work on the weekend you work from morning to like nine sometimes ten yeah uh it was it was difficult but i think I just had like so much passion for this project of mine that mm. I get home from work maybe 10 p.m. and mm. I immediately I just I sometimes I go to gym sometimes I go like eat and but I immediately just get on my computer and start doing my own thing mm. and I can be like that till 3 a.m. and then I go sleep. And then I wake up again in the morning at eight. I go to work and yeah. just repeat, repeat, you know. And I think just because I had like so much passion for this, I didn't really mm. feel tired. I usually feel tired at work because I'm like tired of all this work. You know, it's not really my stuff. But when yeah. I come back home, it's like I have more energy than I had. You have more work. energy reserve, yeah. Yeah, so I have like a lot of energy. I'm like still like researching and still doing a lot of this stuff. And also another another thing that helped me was I I wouldn't say I was I was good at planning but mm. I had some steps like I would take do something mm. and then also I had uh, I, I would still talk about them like the the guys I work with so mm. at this time I would make something and send it to them and they would reply me almost immediately like oh this this looks okay this doesn't look okay then i change you know that also gives me like the motivation mm. to keep going because i'm to keep I'm, going yeah, yeah yeah i'm talking to somebody it's not like i'm just doing my own thing and not getting feedback from anybody i'm just like okay right. i think i'm on the right track yeah, i think if i stay one more hour i can get i can get something i can get to this feedback you know that kind of stuff so that's what just helped me at that time yeah with the and now also i still use that same principle i just try to keep a balance right now that's yeah. cool that's cool uh, i i like the way where where you 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 know you show the importance of also having a supportive system you know yeah, yeah especially yeah. like in your endeavors they say if you want to go uh if you just want to go one kilometer just go with uh, by yourself but if you want to go 50 and more if you want to go far you have to have people that walk with you and show you because i mean we don't have that much many eyes that many eyes so sometimes we other yeah. eyes can help you like yeah, yeah I, i i resonate with the with the idea that you're coming from your daily activities your daily required <laughs> activities yeah. and you're you're exhausted from those but when you sit on the computer and you're doing your your own thing there's yeah. there's that energy that yeah. you you don't know you don't know how time runs out runs out yeah, exactly exactly you, you just have to tell yourself time. you know let's sleep we'll do it yeah. tomorrow yeah yeah right 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 i, I that, hear right. that i hear that and sometimes you 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 say ah, today i'm tired i'll sleep early 
But you lie to yourself. You just open yeah. one thing and <laughs> you're, dead, you're dead till six a.m. Right? You're like, oh, I only have one hour to sleep. <laughs> It happened yeah, to me yeah. a lot of times. That's right. And, and the thing is, you still remember that I have to get up early in the morning because I'm required to, you know. Right. So right. that's cool. That's cool. When you're doing something that you love, you really love. That helps you to stay focused, motivated. But right, the importance right. of also having people support your idea, your vision. Yeah. It's very yeah. good. It's very good. So, uh, with this mentioned, I mean, I'm I'm about to bring five ten into the picture. You telling us uh, your most uh, proud moments in your design journey, right? Your proud works, uh, your proud endeavors. Which of many projects that you have done that you, when you look at them, you're like, ah, that was satisfying. Ah, doing that was cool. I mean, five uh, ten is definitely one of the things you enjoy. You enjoy doing up to now. But are there any other? Oh, you mean like the designs or some other things I'm like working on? Yeah, I, I, I just mean uh, in your design journey. What are some of the notable works that you know? You. Uh, yeah, I, I think. I think for me, every all the works like design works I've done I think I, I get like some some sort of fulfillment from it like everything is not the same degree of fulfillment but I always get something from it right well so it's very difficult for me to choose because now you know I, I design buildings I design like clothes as well yeah so, yeah yeah I have like different different satisfaction from from all of them but I think also I, I have like a lot of lessons from This, all this, areas yeah from all this area and this career like one i can say is before i started this like when i write before i started this brand mm -hmm. and i remember the first samples the the first designs i made and mm -hmm. i sent it to the factory and i was like okay make a sample for me and when they sent it back everything didn't look the same because because when you think of it like when you see your drawings on the on the screen on the screen yeah at that time at that time it didn't occur to me that when it comes out in real life probably maybe the colors don't look the same because probably the, the way you see it on the screen maybe your the temperature on your screen is different from like the yeah. print and everything from real life yeah yeah so <laughs> usually when i got that sample i was already freaking out like okay i think i think I might, I might have gone tired of myself. Maybe this thing doesn't actually look good, you know. Mm. Mm. Then I go back, I change. But a, a lot of times, like these things, just it made me a little bit like down because I'm thinking. Then I'm thinking like, is it maybe? I'm just thinking like this looks good, but it's not. It doesn't actually look good. When mm. then I started changing and changing and changing, I had like. The first time I made like maybe up to 20 samples, just like changing. I'm like, okay, no, I'm not satisfied. I change, I change, I change. But I think the the lessons I learned from from then now is, like, when I make something right now and I get a sample, I I don't freak out anymore. Because mm. now I understand like, okay, there is always room for changes. Because the first time I received it, I was like, oh, it's over. My dream is over. This thing is never gonna work out because. It, it never looks like it, it looks on the on the on the screen you know? <laughs> yeah but now, but now it's like i'm expecting it i'm expecting like them to send me something that is not what i want and then i'm like mm. okay, change, change. sometimes it's not even their fault sometimes it's maybe my fault the way i see the colors and then i have changes and change but now like the process is a little bit better because now i understand the colors better than when I first started and like, when you were starting yeah yeah now I understand the difference between the color on the screen and the color on the print you know like there is that so yeah there, there is that I think it it made me more patient actually mm. because now I know I know like I have to talk to these guys like 20 30 times before they get my stuff and mm. the the first times I'll be just mad like telling them like no this is wrong this is you this is your fault and all the stuff but now i'm like okay i know i understand like okay maybe this what can we change and now i like ask them for like advice like okay what do you think i can change 
and now they're open to like tell me like okay yes because the first time they'll be like no this is your fault you'll be going back and forth like no this is your fault this is my fault so you know but now it's like okay okay i know this this is a problem how do we yeah. fix it and they tell me like okay no i don't know how to fix it and i'm like okay i'll go check or maybe they tell me okay i know how to fix it and you know that that yeah that that lesson i think it's quite important for me yeah in, in the, the journey yeah I, I wouldn't say there is one of my favorite designs but I have, I have a lot i have a lot of designs i've done like on my pc that i haven't even shared because mm-hmm. i still keep working on it i wake up and i'm like okay i want to change something on this you know maybe you always something. you always have something to fix yeah exactly never ends that's also that's something true. i'm trying to learn like okay where is <laughs> the line that okay this is it mm. yeah Sometimes, sometimes uh, dealing with manufacturers, dealing with factories is not. Yeah, easy. I think. I, yeah, I think you also have experience with uh, that. When when you order something and in your mind you're like, it was supposed to be like this. Yeah. Why? You, and I told you, and you know right, all these right. communication issues. You're explaining this, explaining that, and they don't yeah. get it. It just ends up. Sometimes, yeah, I I hear you were on the yeah. part where you get frustrated. You're like, yeah. what is the the person who is going to buy this? How are they going to think? W- and especially yeah. if you 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 are making orders like, especially for instance, when I do customization or you know products, yeah. mm-hmm. and I'm doing this customization for people, yeah, and the people have a deadline that they are expecting to meet to get the products and. The manufacturer yeah. sends you the products and you look at them and you're like, why did you do this to me? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's difficult. It's difficult. Yeah. And at the same time it's it's reju- uh, rejuvenating when you get it right. Yeah. When it comes right, yeah. there's a good feeling about it. Right, right. But yeah, there's there's another thing about that is another thing I learned is sometimes mm. also the way you think like this thing should look is not always yeah. the way it would look. And the way you say it is different from how someone else will say it. Who we'll see it? Yeah. What I mean is, if I do something like, um, I want this to be maybe light green, for example, mm. Mm. and they print it, and it's dark green. If I come and sell it to you, you wouldn't come and tell me, no, this should be light green. Yeah. Because you don't know my intentions. For you, it's like you don't oh, know the perspective. Yeah. For you, it's like this is cool. I like it. But for me, I'm like, no, I don't like because it, it should be light green. So that is also something I also learned to like pull away from, like pull the attachment I have to my own designs and be like, okay, this is okay. It's not, it's not supposed to be like hundred percent, but as long as it's good, like the quality is good, everything is good. It's still okay. Mm. It doesn't mm. have to be the, the, the like bright RGB or blue or green or yeah. red you want you know that 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 kind of stuff and people yeah. don't even know your intention about it they're like i give you this and you're like oh this this looks very intentional i like the way you did it it's, a mistake like, yeah like you thought about it you know and you just came out like that you know that's that also something like i, I learned like i just i think sometimes uh yeah sorry for catching you uh, i think so, yeah. uh it is practical how sometimes you can invent or renovate something out yeah. of just the blue out of nothing yeah 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 because just a little tweak and people think oh this is cool yeah, yeah in your yeah. mind you're like guys if you knew it was a mistake yeah but i won't tell you now it's a mistake yeah <laughs> and sometimes you know you're designing right and you're like okay yeah. i'm writing all this thing and then mm. you make a mistake you delete something and i'm like okay yeah. this looks good but this is not even there and I'm like okay <laughs> that was my intention but <laughs> it was just yeah. a mistake. those kind of things happen yeah, that's true that's think, true it's fun. hey don't leave don't leave uh we are get we are going on with the conversation and this is the self seed podcast today we are with Faye, episode 15 he's uh helping us redefine design and we're trying to incorporate design into our daily life and see how we can live a better life while enjoying the aesthetics of our environment of our of how our life is just curated how it is created so uh fey now i i i want to think take, uh, take you out of 
take things out of your mind and see what can you advise to another uh, young adult to another youth trying to you know navigate someone maybe is in uh, design school someone maybe is in uh, just the beginning of their career someone is starting their own uh, clothing brand or their own design company what do you think is a better uh, is is the greatest thing that you can let them know on their journey uh okay i would i was split it into two like architecture and the clothing brand right uh uh so for architecture architecture is a very difficult um profession i've i've like quit in my mind a thousand million times i can't even count how many times like i'm like i've even told my friends oh i'm gonna quit now you know and then i still keep going you know sometimes it's i think it just ends up in the end is like what do you want from it mm. you know and and so sometimes i'm like okay i, I don't want to do architecture anymore and then i go online i see i see a picture of a building and i'm like oh this is cool i would i would like to design something like this one day you know you know like yeah. how how will you design this if you say you want to quit you understand mm. and yeah. then I'm, okay i'm going to do it for a while more maybe something like <laughs> that and you know life doesn't always go like the way you want mm. you, like go and go to work and so much work and like oh i'm not even getting to this place where i'm like okay i need to build my own things correct but i think in the end it just it just depends on if you really want it yeah and it's it's okay to like decide like okay, you want to quit it's okay to do something else and it's okay to like be indecisive like okay do i want to do this do i don't want to do that uh, but i think at the end of the day you just have to figure out what 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 you want from it like i watched a uh, I don't remember which podcast mm. but I, I heard somebody say something which really resonated with me one time and it said if you want to do something never think about how because you'll never do it in the sense mm. that you should think about why you want to do it All because right. if you want to do something and you think that think about how will I do this you will never will do I it. do this because everything you you want to do will be difficult because mm-hmm. i'm like oh you're thinking like okay i i want to create a clothing brand how will mm-hmm. i create a clothing brand then you're thinking like oh i have to go on my pc make the design i have to go online look for a manufacturer i have to go talk to them i have to get the sample like they have to make like 20 samples before i get one sample you know when you think about like the whole process yeah you're like okay no i don't want to do that but then when you think about why do I want to do this mm. when you have like a bigger goal it then mm. becomes easier because now you have like an end goal so you uh, the guy said like you think about why first and then after you like figure out like why you want to do something and then you think about how I think that's a very yeah, good how, thing. yeah that's I remember what, what one article I I wrote uh, on my on, on the Aussie Wanderer blog yeah. and uh one thing uh that I learned and I ended up that's why I ended up writing the articles about redefining your why like yeah you have to to have the you know the five w's and one h and the h is actually the last one the how is comes yeah. later yeah. your how yeah. comes yeah. later but you have right. to have the why the where the when yeah, the yeah. with who right. and then later yeah. comes the maybe the yeah, right. how yeah the what how how is like the end thing that you're now going to say okay yeah. everything is already in place i've started my processes i'm already doing this this so how am i going to maybe achieve this or how am i going to sell this or how because as you said it's a it's a <clears throat> and i think it's a it's a very big setback that when we think when we are looking at the at the full picture it's so right. grand that yeah. we cannot comprehend the grandiosity of the picture Right, and then right. we are feeling like ah uh, how am i going to do that how yeah, and then yeah, you just yeah, end yeah, up yeah. saying ah no let's wait no, I cannot and make the it moment there, right. the more you wait it means the more you're pushing back your dream but okay. the one thing i've also experienced is that when you just start doing mm. and then re- uh, keep the why at uh, oh, constantly at check right. you'll definitely event or eventually just automatically manage the how 
how you're yeah. going to do it because yeah. there's there's a thing about us human beings i think our minds are so elastic that they can uh, adopt new methodologies on how to do things right right so right right if you decide just to embark on a journey then easily you can you see can fix the house the house yeah, the house yeah, 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 but if yeah, you just yeah. sit as you said on the, on a, <laughs> on your on your uh, on your chair and you're just thinking how am i going to do i want to do that but how am i when you yeah. think about all the setbacks all the negatives yeah i think the negatives will even close up the positives yeah I, yeah everything will be always difficult right yeah. yeah yeah and also another thing is this this i learned very late also as like yeah. when i when i started because i have this kind of like perfection perfectionist like mindset kind of trait that yeah when i started i wanted everything to be the way i wanted the way you be. want them yeah i want it to be like this 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 mm. and then when you start you see you have a lot of problems like you have cost problems you have like what i say manufacturing problems but yeah. along the line i realized that it's not about doing it all at once like the mm. the incremental changes yeah what matters so sometimes now now when i do something and i'm like okay i made a mistake i'm like okay fine i cannot i'm not i'm not going to do anything about it right now but i still have yeah. a negative you understand so i'm not gonna mm. like okay be all down about it because i know next time i can fix it and yeah there's always thing, room for change yeah yeah yeah, yeah go on. right i remember i said i was gonna split it into two architecture and clothing brand yeah so yeah. the clothing brand part is yeah. what i learned is so my when i started the clothing brand my idea was i'm gonna make this cool t-shirts that look nice and mm-hmm. stuff and just sell it to people and everybody's gonna buy it. but when you start you realize when you make something nobody's gonna buy it yeah but the thing is people are only gonna buy if you keep doing it right so for instance you come you see i made one t-shirt today you probably wouldn't buy it because mm-hmm. why would you buy it tomorrow i make another t-shirt I tell you like oh I tell you the story about this first t-shirt like oh I yeah. made this amazing t-shirt and all this stuff you're not gonna buy it the second time also yeah. you're probably not gonna buy it the third time also you're probably also not gonna buy it maybe yeah. when it gets like maybe four five six and then you're yeah. curious like how is this guy still going there must be something good in this thing maybe yeah. he's selling out all this stuff he's making a lot of money for me to be able to continue and then you buy it and then you see like oh it's good so that's how you like convert people you cannot convert people immediately and that was something i didn't i didn't think in the first place so i thought like okay i'm gonna just give you the t-shirt and be like oh yeah i love it i'm gonna buy it but it's never like that so it's like you just have to just outlast yourself that's it just keep going you do you do it this time no one buys keep going because that- people people always say yeah, that's the thing so when yeah. you see it tomorrow you see like five years from now you'll be like okay mm. what is what is in this stuff why 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 does it keep going and you're not giving up i think that's that's right. the only thing i can because when you when you make i remember when when i started started the brand i had a yeah. friend who told me like uh because you make it because you made it that doesn't mean someone will buy it but at that time for me in my head i was like oh this guy just hates me you know i was like no nah, no nah, you cannot tell me that i'm just starting i mean in yeah. that but but now i understand like okay yeah he it, he's it, just like the wrong delivery wrong time but he uh, yeah he, had a, he, had a he was very right yeah yeah was very right. so but but you know these are things you learn along the line it's very i mean i'm just happy to be there actually <laughs> Yeah. I like the way that the, you say the the guy was just hating. You thought at that moment, uh, yeah. So that's my guy. How how do you come at this point and tell me? Because yeah, well, but that I'm, that I'm was trying real. to get to the top, and you're telling yeah. me oh because I made it and what? <laughs> yeah, that was real. That was I think that was real. Like now I understand. At, at that time mm. I was like, no, this is this is this is some bad energy. But now I understand what it means. I think there's there's power to uh, when you you realize that. Not everybody likes you. 
Yeah. Not everybody will like the, the the things that you deliver. Yeah, right. And not you're not everybody's favorite. Yeah. <laughs> and you and when you take this from your personal point of view and move it to your brand, you will understand even how to navigate competition, navigate right. uh, the difficulties of doing business or being yeah, a startup or being a small everything. company. Right. Yeah. Right. Because when you when you're starting as you said when you're starting always a journey you think maybe two or three friends they tell you yeah this is a good idea and you feel like the whole world will say it's a good idea yeah, 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 right, but right. out there the world is ruthless it's and cool. sometimes people just tell it to your face that ah, your products are not good yeah, and i think cool. the important thing is when we, we we put into consideration the process knowing that we are learning yeah, yeah. when someone yeah. Uh, and especially i think uh, how how they like to say is accepting con- constructive criticism yeah especially right. if you know that you're always getting oh your products are so cool you're nice and i mean that's not going to help you very much because yeah. nobody challenges your your creativity nobody challenges your 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 innovation right. but when people when there is competition when there is this constant criticism yeah. definitely your your innovation advances yeah, yeah, you will always have a new idea okay wait yes i've pleased five people but there's one person who say the the, the the clothes are not so good right so i have to think of a way that i will at least uh reach to this person this single right. person may feel right. like exactly. oh exactly right yeah and when you mentioned about your your, your brand your you know your journey and so on i think yeah. i for one person want to would want to know now know more how to reach out the story of the brand right mm-hmm. the story yeah. the simple story of the brand the overall portfolio or how your works your your products and this is my opportunity to you to share your brand story and the things that you do at uh, 15 the products the, the services and so on and yeah Maybe yeah. the listener listening the same as me would want to reach out and maybe explore your products because even us talking about the the palm design, right. yeah, maybe someone yeah. doesn't know what we were talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As, so, as it goes, let the palms let the palms uh, speak. Is it speak or guide you something like that? <laughs> yeah, like palms see everything. <laughs> yeah, the palms see everything. Yeah, yeah. sorry, I uh, got that wrong. So yeah. yeah. So- maybe share with us uh, about 15 more so yeah so um yeah like i said in the beginning the the brand started at covid and the in the beginning the the idea for the name was yeah. 15 one five yeah 15 yeah so that's why you see you see the logo xv you know the yeah, Roman XV, yeah. Of, of the so what happened was why we made 15 was we first we couldn't get the domain name we couldn't get the instagram name and you know it's quite important in today's world like yeah you need a domain instagram and all that stuff so right. we, we already okay. like had the idea 15 and everything and then we're like okay if this names are not available right now what what should we do then we're like okay let's at five it's still kind of ties in right so now yeah. that's, that's why you see sometimes i i would call it 15 or i would call it 15 whatever because that's that's that was the initial idea the and initial it, idea yes it ties in with the xv that's why you see some people also call it 15 some people also call it 15 so we we, right. we we yeah we don't like make a distinction between these two yeah so that, that that's that's that and then so I started during COVID. I I did the first, I did the first drop, that was the t-shirts and the hoodies. Yeah. And during this time, I had the, uh, I had my brother helping me, with, like I just send him ideas and sometimes he tells me, this is cool, I like this, I don't like this, or something like that. And also I had another friend who we lived together in China. Mm. before and then he moved to canada so this guy also i'm always sending sending him ideas and everything and then he even 
out of his pocket, he gave me some money to like run the sample. At that time, we were not working together. It was just like, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I like this. So just run the samples and because he saw like also I was like making a lot of losses like with the sample because I had like so many. I was like, oh, just take this this money and run the sample. And then I dropped the first. I did the first shoot. I did drop the first uh, thing, the first drop and everything. And then moving on, we I was still talking to like my brother also was always like always involved in the process of like the design and my friend in right. Canada also. And then moving on, I was just like told this guy in Canada, like, okay, what if we do it together? Because he already we already know I already feel like we had like similar idea because when I mm-hmm. tell him this, he, he's already like, Oh, you can do this. And I'm like, Oh, I've, I was already thinking about this before. Yeah, so, we're on the same mind, yeah. Yeah, I feel like we're on the same path. I was like, oh, let's mm-hmm. let's run this thing together. And also, my brother, because he was always there, I was like, okay, you all could be there. And then he also had a friend who was he's like a very creative guy. He does picture, he takes pictures. He also like have a high for design, like you know, like mm-hmm. what we said. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, I have this guy also. I was like, oh, cool, let's join. So that's how we like, okay, we created like a network, right? And that's how we started. We dropped the second, we did the second shoot, we dropped the second shoot. On the shoot, there was a there was a girl that was invited to the shoot also. And she was like, oh, this is very cool. I like this stuff. And we were like, oh, we my friend also told her, like, oh, we're looking for somebody, maybe you can run the social media and all that stuff. She was like, oh, she's interested. So that's how you know the team kept getting bigger like that and now mm-hmm. we're like okay all it kind of like a partnership and i feel like without these guys i probably maybe i would have given up also i said because yeah. yeah you know it's difficult sometimes it gets very very difficult sometimes you cannot be 100 percent all the time you're right. like making sometimes you're like 50 percent sometimes you're 90 percent sometimes you're like, you're like 10 percent but then if you have more percentage from your from the guys I work with, they're like, okay, you can do this, or let's do this. And then I'm like, okay, I keep pushing. Because sometimes maybe in a week, I'm like, okay, I don't want to think about any of this stuff. I'm not I'm not running any designs. I'm not coming to any meetings this week. And it was always cool. There was still like going on, nothing stopped, right? So can you imagine if I was the only person and this week I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do anything. Everything stops for a week. <laughs> or it, and then it can get to two weeks, right? It can get to three weeks and get to a month, you know, that kind of stuff. So I think it's very important for me to get all of these guys on on page. And I feel like we all have the same vision for the for the project. And if like when I give them an idea like, oh I, I think we should do this, their first answer is always do it. It's not like, oh why, why do you want to do this? What's the they don't question me like, okay, tell me, come pitch the idea to me or something like that. You know, that, that kind of stuff. Just like, so that's, that's, yeah. that's, the, that's the energy I like. So, yeah. So we're all just trying to move it as, as much as we can. And I feel like all of these guys are very talented in their own ways. We have the guys who are very like good with business. We have guys who are like good with like communicating with people. We have the guys who are like very good with social media so we i think we have we have all the right people to yeah. yeah so yeah we just work like that they usually say when you have the, the right people in your corner when you have the right minds in your corner yeah you're already halfway there right right you're right. going good yeah. yeah so congratulations on that and yeah, keep, keep doing the good job that you guys are doing i think thank it is you. evident if you go to www five team studios.com right you someone will also uh, attest to the the good ideas that are being uh, created on that on that uh, by you guys so that's a very good job so thank you very much Faye, for being with us today thank you for sharing all some insights on how we can redefine rethink about design and see how we can even better mix it into our daily life and see that we there are just simple traits, simple processes that we can do every day that are based on design or design thinking, design approaches, principles 
and just emulate them in our daily life. Thank you so much for being part of today's podcast. And maybe you can share how can uh, our listeners, how can the people listening, the young person listening right now, how can they connect with you, your works? Uh, so you can check me at my personal page on Instagram where I post some of my designs sometimes. I'm not very, I'm trying to be consistent on that, but you know, sometimes you just, you, I, I post like once and I fall off and then I come back like, you know, I, like I never left, you know. So my in, personal Insta, Instagram is by Fei Fakola Day. So it's B-Y-F-E-Y-I-F-A-K-O-L-A-D-E. That's my personal personal page and you can check out uh our brand instagram uh 15 studios or 15 studios it's spelled f-i-v-e-t-e-e-n then studios that's our instagram and yeah basically you can send us a dm on instagram on our brand page you can send me a dm personally i would reply personally and on the brand page someone else would reply you but we're always there, so yeah, that's that's how you can find find me basically. That's cool. That's cool. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for sharing such awesome insights. Yeah, and thank you for having me. It was an awesome conversation. <laughs> All right, dear listeners, thank you for being part of today's podcast. This was season three, episode fifteen, redefining design. We have looked at design for just products processes and even we look at everything in between there so today we had Faye on the podcast and this episode was probably brought, brought to you by OC Outdoor Products and you can go to www.ocgroup.com and check out their products and services and we have Faye with us and until next time I hope you apply the the design principles to your daily life and do reach to Faye on Instagram or 5team studios on Instagram or www.5teamstudios.com if you want to learn more about them and their products. Until next time, take care. This is the self Seen Podcast, your personal friend. In just, one, just, one, just one last thing. This one yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. Did, you, did you plan the episode? Because it's episode 15, right? So it just matches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't plan it. Just, oh, now that I think of it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't see? plan it. It just happened automatically. Oh, oh. Yeah. I think I think I need to, 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 to name this episode as uh, season three, episode 15. I swear, I yeah, I'll, that, I'll write yeah, that. yeah that, ah. that's a good idea. You know, all this time I, I didn't put it into mind. And yeah, now your back is working. Yeah, just right now, just right now when you said it, I'm <laughs> like, oh, God, was it planned? <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. That's so cool. Ah, yeah, thank you for yeah. reminding me. But yeah, I didn't plan. I just, it just happened. And oh, now that's it's, cool. it's when you put it into my mind. Yeah, that's but yeah, cool. Let's call this episode 5G. Yeah, I, lo- I, I love the name. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, and uh, hope to see you next time. And dear listeners, remember to subscribe on your favorite listening platform for new episodes every Tuesday. Bye-bye.